Hey guys, what's going on? Underground Geek here. And so I just got this book in the mail. I know that I'm late to the game. Everybody's already talked about it. But it doesn't matter because I want to talk about it now. But anyway, so I want to talk about this book. I just got done reading it. And I got to say I like the I like the whole hardcover style, you know, because I know it's going to last a little bit longer. Uh, it's pretty cool with the symbol on the back there. It's got Jim Lee as the publisher. <clears throat> it's Batman, the Dark Prince Charming, one of two. Got the nice black covers here. Um, there's another page there. Batman, the Dark Prince Charming, one of two. Story and art by Marini. Okay. Uh, Batman created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger. And then you've got this title page here. It kind of lets you know whoever, you know, who all is working on it. See all those people. You got it, you got it. Um, <clears throat> so, if you don't know who this guy is, his name's Enrico Marini, and he's a, um, a British comic book artist, and this is his first American comic book. So there he is. He's working on Eagles of Rome comic book. That's one of the books that he did. And basically, this is pretty cool, because you get like this little story here, where he's basically having a conversation with Batman about, uh, about writing the next Batman story. So I thought that was fun. We'll get another black page here. And then we start the actual story. And see, this this is a lot like a book book. This is almost like a children's book, you know, you would get that has the really good pages and the story, you know, that you would be telling a story to someone. That's what it's felt like to me. So we get this opening shot here with this kid. And uh, it says, where am I? Hello, is anyone there? Mom, where are you? Mommy. And then we get this page here and we know who that is. And so there he comes, and all the mice are scurrying around. And he says, knock, knock. And there he comes down there. And then we get your opening shot here of what the Joker's going to look like. And I do like the story. I do like, or I do like the style of him. It's very, it's very English, though. Like, if you look at this the style, it's very English style to it. So it's kind of cool because you're getting to see what it would be like. If a if an English styled comic book was done for Batman, basically, then you get the the mansion there, Wayne Manor, in case you didn't know, and uh, a package arrives. We know who the, who brought that kind of package. There's only one person that wraps packages like that, and that's when he says, "So he is still alive, still out there, and he knows." All right, so then. We get, and see, this is the only thing I don't really like. It doesn't really go back and forth like it's supposed to. Because usually it would say, like, hey, that was a month ago. This is now. So you're a little confused about the timeline. So there's a van. Um, obviously gang members. They're all dressed like uh, jokers. And we notice this one guy here. Who's that look like? And so there comes the bad guys out the back. He's got a minigun. I thought that was really cool. Look at the drawing of that minigun. I like, the, I like the mask, too. So, anyway. Then we got this cool shot. That's pretty fun, isn't it? It says, The Joker, my worst enemy, my op opposite. Most think even the devil would kick him out of hell. Some think the same about me. Okay, so we're getting the, we're getting the idea of these two here. I've tried so many times to tear him out of Gotham City, but he's like a weed. He keeps coming up. Okay. And then we get this awesome shot here. Right, 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 right. He's shooting all the cops up. Here comes somebody else. Who could that be? And uh, so the Joker's going back and forth with one of the criminals. He shoots him, knocks him out of the car. Who jumps over him? Catwoman. Pretty cool bike. I like the style of the costume in the bike. Mini gun is instantly taken out. And she's mad basically because they stole something that she was trying to steal. Who's coming in? We see somebody up there on the rooftops. Whoop, whoop. And though, so then they knock her off her bike. She saves herself. Who's coming? Awesome shot here. This reminds me of Batman Begins. Right there with that shot. Oh, looky here. We just entered Bat Country. You can tell that he he likes the Batman. So 
there they are. That's a pretty cool style of, of a van, if I do say so. But it's almost like this is in the future. You know, because if you look at these cars, it seems very futuristic. But yeah, they use old guns for whatever reason. And so they shoot at him. He gets mad because he wanted to shoot at him first. And then immediately tells them all to shoot at him. <laughs> That's the Joker's logic. So there's Batman. See, the outfit is very Batman Begins to, to me as well. So it's pretty fun. He obviously knew that Batman was coming. He put bulletproof glass on there. So it takes a while. <clears throat> it takes a while for Batman to actually break through. He wrecks the vehicle, goes off the bridge, and he's gone. And there's the Joker smiling through the glass. There's Catwoman watching. She says, I do, my sweet pearls, because they were in that vehicle. Batman didn't go off with them. He captures all the bad guys. Pretty cool shot. Joker gets away. He's very angry, though. And this was a scene that was pretty funny right here. So, they're wrapping things up. Now they're talking. And we get um, Commissioner Gordon here. And <laughs> Batman says, vaping? You look ridiculous. And then we get this cool page here where he says, says the guy running around in a bat costume. You know, that gets used a lot as an excuse. But it's so funny that they incorporated vaping into this. So, there's a cool shot of Batman with his suit. Then we get another shot here of him talking to Gordon with the bat signal in the background. Pretty cool. And then he leaves and Commissioner Gordon, um, I think Commissioner Gordon, yeah, he throws his vape away. <laughs> so there's the Joker. He's made it in. Joker looks very punk rock right there. There's a birthday party. Who's the birthday party for? I don't know. Harley. It's her birthday. So they're having a party for her. So there he is. Pretty cool shot there. He is uh, going to yank that guy's teeth out because he mouthed off to him. There's the whole crew. We get to see all the crazy people in his crew. Like the cake. And then we get our introduction of Harley. She's very British looking. Has a very unique outfit. He gets her, he made her a necklace of teeth out of the guy's teeth. She didn't appreciate that very much. So she smashes the cake. And so then she storms off. See her storming off? And then they go back and forth arguing. And he decides that he needs to, to uh, do something different. Tells that guy to hand him a gun. And he proceeds to mow everybody down in the crew. Until he gets a little chubby here. When he gets to Dan Slott, he asks him, why did, is he not scared? And Dan Slott says, name's Archie, and life sucks. Why do I care? He says, sweetie pie, you have to see this. So as he's walking in there, he says, oh, so you're suicidal. Hey, love that. Hold on. I'm flying, my dear. And he, he gives Dan Slott the gun, and then he tells Dan Slott to clean up everything. <clears throat> and so that's when they see this diamond is going to be auctioned off soon, and she wants it. He's like, great. So then, we get another scene here where he's flipping a channel and he sees, oh, gossip going on with Bruce Wayne. Apparently, there is a woman that is going to sue Bruce Wayne, which is Batman, over an illeg illegitimate so-called daughter that they have together. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Look at the Bat Batmobile here. Pretty awesome. And that's when Joker gets his plan together. He says he's going to kidnap that girl and use a ransom to get Harley her gift. So then he uh, tells old, uh, Dan Slott here to go get a bunch of new goons. He's probably going to go call up Jordan D. White and uh, Mark Wade and, and Heather Antos and people like that. Kwanzaa probably wouldn't come. He's too high profile. He's, and she says, so then there's the girl she shows. So we don't really see... This is the first time I've seen a thing that told me what was going on. This is three months earlier. So this is where she arrived at the door. At first I thought this was Kate Kane. She kind of looks like her. And so that would have been kind of a cool twist if they had done it that way. But, you know, whatever. So she's very English punk style. And then we get the daughter here. She has a little birthmark. It almost looks like a heart. At first I thought she was Domino. 
And uh, basically she says, you know, I've, I brought your kid, remember me, I want some money. And the little girl's very nice, but the mom not so much. And that's when he notices her, she has uh, marks on her arm from taking drugs. So he's not having any of that and tells her to leave and she says she's going to sue him. And that's when we get to see what's going on. Catwoman is actually with him right now. And she's none too happy about this. So she takes it out on him. So then he uses <laughs> he uses uh, Alfred to get away, has him hold the door. And that's when he goes on trying to investigate what's really going on. And this is where the lawyer is driving with the mom and the daughter talking about how he's going to save the day for him. He's going to get him a bunch of money. And the daughter doesn't really want to do that. She just wants to, you know, get to know him. And that's when we get, wham! Somebody crashes into their car. Flips it over and who walks out? The Joker. And so that's when he kidnaps the little girl. So Batman shows up to the scene. He's trying to find out what's going on. And that's when he recognizes her. Mm -mm. And he knows what's going on then. Joker has kidnapped the girl. So from then on, we get this nice little exchange here between Joker and the girl. Talking back and forth. It's funny because he says, uh, he says at one point that she reminds him of someone. And uh, there's Harley Quinn again. There's some bats. He says, huh, he, she reminds me of someone. And it, it can only be that she reminds him, or she reminds him of Batman. So I thought that was funny. Got a nice little shot here of the Batcave. Batmobile there. Nothing too crazy. You know, you could have been a lot more elaborate the way some people have had. But he just does something simple here. So that's kind of cool because I'm, I'm a little bit exhausted seeing all the, all the latest Batcaves here lately because... You've got, let's see, what was all You had Batman Beyond's Batcave going on. You had the Batman and Justice League Batcave. You had Batman White Knight. You had Batman All-Star. I mean, you had a lot of different Batcaves here lately being introduced. So it's cool to have something a lot different. So then, he's questioning the guy there to get information out of him. Finds out where the Joker's hangout is. Done. Cool shot there. He's chasing some bad guys down. And that's when we get the introduction of the croc. And the croc basically in this storyline is someone that's had a couple of augmentations here on his skin and had a lot of tattoos done. He's not necessarily a croc. He just made himself look like one. You can see. And this jacket right here reminds me of the of, uh, Suicide Squad with him. So it's a little bit reminiscent of that. Oh no. We, we got a Nazi. There's a Nazi in this comic. Oh, no. Mm -mm. We can't have that. He's in it again. Oh, my gosh. This is very troubling. Troubling. So then we get this awesome shot of Batman here because Batman punches Nazis. So he takes out all the bad guys. He takes out the Nazi first. Bam. See? He's like, take that, you Nazi. Gosh. It's so problematic. I'm triggered. And that's when he starts going at it with a croc. And he even gives the croc the first punch. Very, He looks almost like Ben Affleck there. Batman's not having it, though, because he's got things to do. Yeah, this, this croc reminded me a lot of Suicide Squad croc. That must have been what he was going for. Maybe not, but that's what it looks like. So then he's fighting him, beats him in the ground. Gets the information that he needs, and then carries on to the beating. <laughs> Catwoman is starting to notice, though, because Catwoman is hanging out, and she says, uh, What's happening to you, Bruce? This rage, where is it coming from? You know, she's kind of watching him a little bit. I like the outfit. It's very unique. I haven't seen that before. Oh, look at this shot. Hmm. He says, Master Bruce, I'm, I'm worried you need to rest. You haven't slept in for days. He goes, neither has she, Alfred. So he's thinking about her. Batman, where are you? She really thinks a lot of Batman. And so then we get the shot. The Joker is ready. He's getting ready. He's going to head out. 
and that's where we end. A little shot of Holly there, like I said, very British. So, and then the back of the book says, Enrico Marini takes his place among the industry best with his magna opus, Batman the Dark Knight, or Dark Prince Charming. With a, 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 oh my gosh, I can't talk, I'm so tired. Basically, you get it. I just got back from the mountains, if you're wondering. I've been in the mountains, and uh, we just drove like five hours, so I'm extremely tired. But I want to do a video for you guys, because I got this in the mail and just had to read it immediately. But look, Dark Prince Charming 1 of 2. What do you guys think of it? Have you read it already? Have you not read it? Have you been waiting to get it and haven't got it yet? If not, I would say get it. It's a, it's a very different story here. It gives you something new and interesting. The characters are cool and interesting. It's something that's been done before many times, but it's something that's always solid story to write about. If you're going to open up into something, why not go into something simple that you're comfortable in so you can get the lay of the land, and then kind of go on from there. You know what I mean? But anyway, that may just be me. So, all right, guys. Uh, tell me what you think about this video. Tell me what you think about the review. Tell me what you think about the story. The story is not necessarily that complex, but it doesn't have to be because it's just a good superhero comic book. It has a lot of British styles to it, um, things like that, and that's okay because we need something different. Batman can only be told so many different ways by certain people, so it's good that they give it to somebody else that's very talented. I had never heard of this guy before, just because I don't, haven't read very many British comics. I'm sorry. I just like superhero comics, so... Um, but I did check this out and I do like it, so I, just, I suggest you guys check it out too. What do you guys think about the character designs? Because I feel like he's very much Ben Affleck. I don't know who I would go with this. He almost reminds me of the guy from uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Spike. That's who he reminds me of. But anyway, guys, tell me what you think about the video. Tell me what you think about the review. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you later. Underground Geek out.